Welcome, welcome everyone who's joining. I see a lot of familiar names and faces. It's good to see you guys again. All right, if I think we're ready to get started. Sounds good. All right, well, happy Monday everyone. Uh, welcome to our first meeting after the break. I hope everyone had a great break. Uh, so I'm Justin, one of the Monday meeting directors. And I'm Gabby, and we're excited to have Anderson here to speak with us today. So before we get started, here are the announcements for the week. Again, welcome back. I hope you're all recharged and ready to uh, for what's next in the semester. Join us on Wednesday. We'll have Baker Tilly presenting on uh, building confidence. This Friday um, on the 26th from 5 to 6 p.m., we'll have a cooking session. So bring your appetite because we're making fettuccine Alfredo via Zoom. If you've missed any of our previous meetings, you can find them on our YouTube page at AAC Sun. Uh, and yeah, that's it for the announcements. And today we are lucky to have Caitlin from Anderson with us today presenting on how to effectively adapt to a remote working environment. We encourage everyone to have their cameras on. And uh, if you have any questions, please use the Zoom raise hand feature. We'll also be doing questions towards the end. So uh, it's at the bottom, it's a little emoji. And without further ado, uh, Caitlin, feel free to take it away. Thanks guys. Happy Monday. All right, I would love to talk to myself and see myself, but I would more importantly love to see you guys. So if you are able to turn on your cameras, um, it makes it a lot more entertaining for me. <laughs> so how how is everyone's spring break? Anyone go anywhere fun? Hung out at home? <laughs> Chris, don't look so disappointed. <laughs> how about you, Brianna? Do you go anywhere fun? Yeah, I just got back from San Francisco last night. So Oh, awesome. Do you have family or friends up there? No, it was just my sister and I. We just got a hotel and just got takeout from everywhere. <laughs> so we, Oh, very fun. <laughs> Good for you. I'm glad people are, are getting up and around. How about you, Julian? Anything fun for spring break? Uh, no, just relaxed and enjoyed the time off at home. Don't do too much. Oh, good. Hey, sometimes it's nice just to rejuvenate, recharge. I'm sure you guys are in the thick of uh, midterm. So kudos to you all. Hopefully you got to, to take the time to relax. So Without further ado, I do want to kind of get into our presentation here about how to navigate this remote environment. It is crazy that we are in what, week 53 now? I think last week was the week we all were, were sent home. So here we are, <laughs> slowly but surely making it back. So I am going to share a quick presentation. I would love to save the last couple of minutes open for Q&A. Anything that you have in particular about Anderson and the firm, I am happy to share those with you. I lead all of the recruiting efforts, both at the campus level and the lateral hire level for all of our Southern California offices. So um, with that being said, if you're not originally from SoCal and you, you, know, you wanna go to New York or San Francisco, um, somewhere outside of the, the SoCal region, I'm happy to put you in touch with the right recruiters. So just give me a holler and we can kind of go from there. So I am gonna go ahead here and share my screen and share my sound because Justin reminded me. <laughs> All right, are you guys able to see that? All right, awesome. So really what I wanna go over today is what differentiates top applicants from others in a remote environment and then furthering it now that you're about to start for my graduates out there, how are you going to be successful in the, navigating this remote uh, work environment? So we can kind of go over both of those logistics, but I want to start off with a really super quick 45 second clip here that kind of sums up everything that we have experienced to this point. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has seen this before. Scandals happen all the time. The question is how do democracies respond to those scandals? Uh, and what will it mean for uh, for the wider region? I think one of your children has just walked in. I mean, shift it, shifting shifting sands in the region. Do you think relations with the north may change? Um, I would be surprised if they do. <laughs> the um, pardon me. Pardon me. 
My apologies. <laughs> What was this going to be for the region? My apologies. North, uh, sorry. Um, North Korea, North and uh, South Korea's policy choices on North Korea have been severely limited in the last six months to a year. So I don't know about you guys, but we, we see this happen all the time <laughs> at work. So um, this is kind of what we can expect to see in our new normal, right? So really do your best to eliminate those distractions, which we'll get on to a little bit later on. But, you know, the pandemic has led companies to work in new ways. Um, and, okay, can you guys, you guys can see the screen, right? It's back to normal. Okay, good. So, um, you know, the pandemic has led companies to work in new ways, including the recruitment process. So it starts now, right? So I'm sure we kind of have a variety of different levels in school here. I'm sure we have freshmen all the way through some master's students, um, or at least some seniors that are graduating. So, um, you know, more than 86% of companies are conduct conducting virtual interviews um, since the pandemic. Many were doing it beforehand, but now have kind of shifted into this new environment. So hopefully by now you've had at least one interview or about to go into one interview where you can really kind of help yourself get comfortable in this virtual setting. So I know that virtual interviews are compliant with stay at home orders and social distancing and they're often times a lot more convenient for you guys, right? Because you may not be located um, next to school anymore or with the company that you're interviewing. So it's definitely have, has this convenience component as well. Um, However, although many companies have kind of shifted to this new uh, setting, I would imagine that it's gonna stick with a lot of companies. Now that they were kind of hesitant to go virtual, um, now that COVID has hit and we've had no choice but to ha have this new normal, I would imagine that many, many companies, uh, including Anderson, are actually probably gonna continue with, uh, this virtual, with this virtual hybrid environment. So, it is a very weird kind of bizarre world that we are in. Um, definitely become a lot more progressive for accounting firms who were kind of resistant to, you know, what the tech companies are doing. But I think overall now video conference conversations, um, for virtual interviews, um, being prepared for jobs, you know, all of those things are now um, from the convenience of this virtual environment. So how, how are we going to navigate that is the bigger question. From start to finish, so all the way from preparation to landing the job. So we're going to go over all of that today in this presentation. So if you guys have any questions kind of as we go throughout this presentation, please just raise your hand. Um, I do have my awesome moderators that will help me um, stop at any point in time if you guys have questions. Otherwise, feel free to table them for the end and we'll kind of go through um, a, a debrief Q&A session as well. So preparation, really making a strong first impression, right? So how do you prepare? Then it goes to standing out. How do you differentiate yourself? Um, how do you meet employers and wow them through this virtual setting? Networking, knowing and using your network, right? Not only your colleagues in school, but um, meeting as many people and getting ingrained in the office culture and environment that you'll be starting in, right? So how do you get to um, get ingrained in these, these companies' cultures while interviewing remotely, um, let alone onboarding in a remote environment. We'll go through all of that. Um, elevator speeches. So what are you going to say? How are you going to um, make that initial first impression? The interviewing do's and don'ts, you know, following up, make it personal. Uh, make sure you're addressing it to the right person. You guys would be surprised how many times uh, one, Anderson is spelled wrong. We do have an E in our name. And then two, um, how many are addressed to the wrong firm? So really just make it personal. Take the time to send that, uh, you know, half a second email, just thanking your interviewers for, for their time. And then landing the job. So landing the job, um, how you're going to onboard remotely. We'll go through all of that. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So putting your best for virtual foot forward. So identify the ideal environment, control the variables, be confident and try to strike up rapport, make eye contact, recover well and follow up because we all know we're gonna make mistakes um, with the distractions going on in our own home, but learn how to recover from those pretty quickly throughout the interview process. Um, and then again, 
but let's focus on controlling the variables, right? So um, don't have any, you know, it's your spring break, don't have balloons or decorations floating around and the fan above you. Um, if you have your family at home, make sure that the door is closed during an interview um, and making sure that you're just in that professional setting so that you can be giving your full attention to um, what's on the screen in front of you. So we can start with preparation. So identifying the ideal environment. So natural light is usually the most flattering. So if possible, you can choose a room with a window, but don't sit directly in front of it. If that's not available, choose a well-lit room that allows your interviewer to see you clearly. I know a lot of times the, um, the rooms that people are in get very dark, so it's very hard to um, you know, really focus and concentrate on our interviewees uh, throughout that process. So um, if you need to add additional lights, that may be something to consider. Definitely do a test run um, with your peers or with your family to make sure that um, you're not a, a silhouette, <laughs> making it difficult to see your face. Um, remember the camera, not the computer screen. So I know the next thing is when we're conducting a lot of these interviews, some of the feedback that we've heard and kind of noticed is you guys may have notes on your computer in front of you, which is totally fine, but practice reading through them. Um, if you have sticky notes or, or anything that you're kind of reading off of, it's very easy for us to tell what you're doing behind the camera, right? So make sure the um, occasional eye contact, uh, make sure that you're not blatantly reading off your notes, make it seem more natural. Uh, stage your background, that's kind of the next biggest thing, right? So consider using a plain and professional virtual background. I see you guys have awesome CSUN uh, backgrounds already. Those are fantastic. So feel free to use those in interviews or they have a lot of different options that you can actually just get from Google as well. So um, make sure that what you pick is not gonna be super distracting and so that we can focus on you and, and not what's going on um, in the background. Control the variables. So we all don't wanna be that guy, right? So try to limit potential external distractions. Let other people in your living space know that you need this certain amount of time uh, dedicated for quiet time, especially if you're living with roommates or family members or friends. Um, make sure that you do have that dedicated time and, and people are kind of aware of your space. So dress the part. You may be in your living room, but don't dress like it. Uh, we've all gotten very comfortable, especially in our SoCal offices in Anderson. We are very, very casual year round, um, including when we are in the office. So I do have to remind myself to get up, um, you know, put on <laughs> some more professional attire for the interviews uh, as we kind of go throughout the day. Uh, know when you have client meetings, know when you have interviews, that sort of thing. So uh, we're not getting too casual, even though, you know, as an office, I think our, our dress code is, is pretty lenient. Um, avoid bright white tops or any shiny jewelry that can cause a glare or be a little bit distracting for your interviewers as well. Uh, be on time. Sign into the video call a few minutes early. You know, depending on the platform, you'll likely wait in a waiting room. Um, if not, just, you know, mute yourself, turn off the camera, just get yourself mentally prepared and ready for the interview process. If your interviewer um, is running late, then, you know, stay patient, but hopefully uh, they're not, because I know, at least for me, uh, we're definitely on a tight schedule going back to back to back. So this will serve as a reflection of your ability to work remotely, because once you are full time, uh, the client meetings that you're going to be in, uh, the team meetings that you're going to have, you're gonna be very pressed for time most likely, especially during the, the busy tax season. So um, start practicing early and often. Minimize the glitches if possible. So you could do a trial of the company's video software. So I know a lot of us use Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the, the platform that you're using, maybe do a quick Google search or ask the recruiter if they can send you any tips for that web browser. That way you can kind of get familiar with the um, with the software in advance. So, you know, search and do your best to ensure the strongest Wi-Fi connection possible. So definitely encourage you to um, be close to your router or at least do some sort of uh, speed check before the interview. Wouldn't want that to be a limiting factor in your, in your interview process. So again, lighting, camera, audio, and distractions, um, and dress. Those are kind of the the top things that you should be well aware of uh, in preparing for your video interview. Along those lines, preparing for your career path. So really start here and ask yourself the hard questions. 
don't just go through the generic questions that you think that the recruiters want to hear. Really think about what is important to you. So what is it that you know you want in a company um, that you could be interning for or working for full time? Is it a collaborative work environment? Is it an independent work environment? Really think about the questions for your employers. Um, take advantage of all opportunities. So attending these meetings is great. Um, meeting people at career fairs, setting up coffee chats, definitely encouraging um, you guys to all uh, take advantage of every opportunity, especially in this remote environment to network as much as possible, which we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later today as well. But set goals for yourself and be honest with yourself. So these are kind of the key five things to think about as you prepare for your career path, which now seems crazy because everyone has sophomore leadership programs or summer leadership programs where they can attend these events as sophomores. So really kind of preparing you for that career path. Um, educate yourselves to the extent that you can with the type of work that people do, the environment uh, that they work in and networking with the people, right? Because a lot of times, um, wherever you go, if it's an accounting firm, big four, mid-tier, the type of work you're going to be doing is very similar. So really, you know, ingraining yourself in the culture and networking with the people that could be your future colleagues is what I absolutely encourage you guys um, to all do. So be honest with yourself. You know, what do you truly want to do with your life? Now is the time to, to just um, learn as much as possible. What are companies, what companies are you looking for? That's I gotta rearrange that next time. Um, but here are a couple of things that we can kind of go into, right? So executive presence, proactive qualities, strong references. So really building up your references now, right? So it could be faculty, it could be career services. Really make sure that you start developing these relationships now so that when you are seeking a full-time job, um, you're the first person that comes to mind. Or if a company needs a reference, you you know are willing to kind of share your faculty or prior employers um, that you've really built these relationships with. So leadership capabilities, I always hands down, you know, we're always looking for people who um, are actively involved in student organizations, in sport, in group projects, really taking on those leadership roles. Because at the end of the day, you want to be a part of a team where if someone can take something off your plate early or uh, you can take something off of a, a coworker's plate out the door um, at a reasonable hour. That is something we absolutely encourage um, and really are looking for in our candidates. And then prior experiences. So even if it's just job shadowing, really kind of getting a good understanding of the type of work that you would be doing at an accounting firm, um, definitely try to the extent possible to get as involved in as many as you can. Um, it could be a, someone's parent. It could be um, somebody that you met at a speaker meeting, or it could be us recruiters just having you, you know, job shadow one of our professionals for the day, just to give you an overall better idea and understanding of, you know, the type of work that you could be doing. Build your foundation. So developing executive presence is like developing a champion. So use the four P's, passion, interest, and show what you value, perspective, interest others to talk to you. So you can relate to your prior experiences, um, you know, maybe you have a, a personal story that is relevant to what you guys are discussing. Um, really, you know, interest others in, in these topics. Poise is the other P. So composure, handling your adrenaline, handling your nerves. It's almost more awkward kind of talking to yourself in front of a computer. So if you can practice, if you can record yourself throughout the interview process, that way you can continue to develop your skills. Uh, maybe you say, um, a lot. Maybe uh, you're very hand, hands driven. Um, really look at, you know, yourself and kind of um, a building block. So each time you can get better and better. Projection, leaving lasting impressions. So what is going to make you stand out? Is it a story? Is it your experience? Um, you know, maybe it's a class project that you were involved in that will make you um, memorable to your recruiter, to your professionals. So advantages to conducting video interviews, and this goes on both sides, right? So many of you right now are kind of going through this video interview process. Once you start full time, you're going to be on the flip side interviewing other people. So these are all really good things to consider on both sides from two different perspectives. 
So be prepared for the shift to video interviewing. Employers, we recognize you know, the advantages to the video interviews. It allows us to reach a lot more people in a shorter amount of time. Um, it gets much more efficient. So we, we still stick to the live video interviews, not the recorded ones, just so that we can get to know you guys a little bit better. But um, the ability to interview while adhering to social distancing restrictions has actually played a big role in, you know, what we're going to be doing in the future. So I would say, um, unfortunately, you know, probably get used to it, at least for the first couple of rounds through interview processes before, you know, we eventually get back into uh, the office environment. So standing out, make eye contact. So I know it seems a little bit awkward. Um, maybe it's not directly into the camera, but find a point on your screen that you know you keep continuing to look at, right? So um, it, it shows your recruiter that you're actually paying attention, that you're not fumbling around with notes. Um, you know, even if it's not directly into the camera eye to eye, at least you know you are making a conscious effort to make. Uh, eye contact with your interviewer or with your team members. It's very, very important. Hiring managers agree. It's a very key differentiator in the interviews that they've conducted. So do your best. Um, so do your best. <laughs> That's all we can say. <laughs> Differentiating yourself. So again, what makes you memorable? What gives you the best chance to get a call back for an interview? stories, persona, unique field related facts, level of preparation, body language, um, follow up with those you meet. So just a reminder, these are the things that are really going to help you differentiate, differentiate yourself from other candidates, as well as once you're in the job, you're going to be the first in line when people think, oh, I have all this new client work, new client engagements to come out. Um, who do I want? Oh, Justin, yes, you, you, you know, you're always around, you're always present um, in this remote environment. It's very easy to hide, right? So don't be the person behind the camera. Um, I always encourage video calls versus um, phone calls or emails. So, you know, to the extent that you can get in front of people, uh, you're just going to put yourself at, at an advantage for, for the more challenging and complex work. You will have multiple chances to stand out. So the interview is certainly not the first and last time that you will meet recruiters, that you will meet interviewers. You are gonna have multiple opportunities to meet a variety of different people. So if you uh, absolutely did horrible in you know, an initial impression at Meet the Firms, don't panic. There's more than likely another chance that you got to meet another professional um, and have a second chance. You'll have that chance. You'll have these technical meetings. You may have a coffee chat, um, then the interview process and the follow-up. So worst comes to worst, you will likely have multiple chances to uh, be successful. Generate a strong impression at multiple events. So you can build off conversations that you had. So let's say you talked about skiing in Mammoth with one of the recruiters and they also enjoyed that. Um, try to take notes and remember that so you can continue the conversations and that way for our uh, professionals and our recruiters, it kind of stays fresh and top of their mind as well. So really cement what makes you a great candidate for the interview. Networking. So like I said, I think this is probably one of the most valuable things that I can provide you um, advice on for my students. So networking is key. Meet as many people as possible. Um, really try to, you know, figure out, um, you know, multiple service lines, um, you know, multiple events, really just to the extent that you can network and get ingrained in the culture, I absolutely recommend it. So be confident and strike up rapport. So be enthusiastic, convey why you're excited about this opportunity. Um, again, you know, you may have multiple chances to stand out, but the opportunities may be a little bit more condensed or limited. So make sure the interviewer knows not only why you want the job, but why you'd be a great fit for it. So, you know, really use those conversations with professionals to kind of draw from those examples and give your interviewer, um, you know, the, the passion or um, the, you know, enthusiasticness that you would if you got the job. Strike up rapport. So you may be feeling nervous. So you know what? It's funny because I think we all get nervous, right? Our professionals sometimes will ping me before the interview and say, what questions should I ask? I've never done this before. Um, you know, I was just interviewing all 
um, my, my student life. Now I'm on the flip side. You know, how do I conduct an interviewer on the other side? So really um, take a deep breath, be confident, just introduce yourself and engage the way you would if, as if you just had met them as a colleague. So uh, you could talk about things like the weather. You could talk about things that you did over spring break. But anything you can do to take down that wall and really get comfortable, um, I definitely you know, would encourage you to, to do that. Talk clearly, talk slowly, talk confidently. Uh, if you're nervous, you'll likely talk a lot faster. So I think the first time I did this presentation when I was first hired, it was like 10 minutes long because I just, I kept talking and talking and trying to get through the presentation. And all of a sudden we had 50 minutes left in the, in the presentation. So talk clearly, talk slowly, talk confidently, um, you know, especially because the internet connections can compromise speaking quality in this remote environment. You need to make sure that you are able to have these conversations and, and be heard. So next, I kind of want to talk about identifying and building your network. So who is in your network? So I'm going to take a pause here. I might need some help from um, Justin and my moderators, but who, who's in your network? Anyone from the audience? Any students? Previous alumni? Yep, that's a good one. Alumni is on there. Who else? Who else might be in your network? My classmates. Classmates and peers, yep. Who else? Dixon said um, his friends and family. Friends and family, if they're in the same industry, yep. We also have professors in the chat. Professors, yep and volunteer and organization heads. So think about all of these people, right? The more events that you attend, the easier it is to meet um, potential employers and people that can be a part of your network. So a lot of your professors have likely worked in the accounting industry, um, past employers that you can use as references, your classmates and peers that may be um, graduated already and then are starting full time. What advice can you seek from them? Um, I definitely encourage you to use this network. I mean, Accounting Association, that's a great one, right? Because all of you, I guarantee, are not going to the same firm once you graduate. So really use this cohort, use each other, because knowledge is power. That's what I always say. I tell everyone that knowledge is power. So if they've been through the interview process, if they've been onboarded in a virtual environment, um, what can you get out of your, your network, right? To help you be a better fit for a firm or um, help you navigate this remote working environment. Thank you guys for answering that. So networking strategies. So really, how do you network, right? So you have this network, but what do you do now? So put yourself out there, attend everything, um, make a memorable first impression, come prepared with resumes and quick introductions really get to know each other. So I don't know if you guys have for AA, if you do icebreakers, how familiar you are with each other, maybe there's a mentoring program, um, but definitely use each other, stay in touch over the years. Um, be genuine and have authentic conversations, right? Ask what you really wanna know, and then be considerate. If you're not genuinely interested in, that's totally fine to, to move on. So learning from your network. So executive presence, past experiences, career advice, inside knowledge, tips, references, my network is your network. So all of these things are things that you can learn not only from each other, but from your professors, from your career services center, um, and so forth. So definitely keep that in mind as you guys are going through this recruiting process as well. So I'll kind of breeze through the elevator speech. I just, I want to make a touch on this because it is important through the interview process, but it is also important when you start full-time um, because people are going to want to know about you. You're a new hire. Uh, so, you know, we can kind of tailor your elevator speech from trying to land the job that now that you've landed the job, really, you know, how are you going to relate to, to your colleagues? So I won't touch too long on this elevator speech because I'm sure you guys have heard this before. But in this context, we're focusing on using it as an introduction to facilitate networking in a business environment rather than for interviews. 
So, um, you know, talk about yourself, where you went to college, you know, maybe there's alumni in the audience that can relate, um, and then what you're looking for. So internship, full-time, uh, and then your, your qualifications and aspirations, right? People want to know about you. So just some quick tips. So practice. And then be genuine and be real. So act natural. Uh, again, it's so easy to have these sticky notes and notes all over your computer. So make sure that you're getting back on track. If you ever lose your footing, take a pause, start over, and then it's give and take, right? So show your interest and respect. Um, it gives you time to think about the next conversation bridge that you guys are going to have. Um, a lot of times the recruiter will start with a, by leading the question with some examples. Um, use that time to kind of think about the best response or answer to uh, the questions that you're, you're being asked, especially if this is in client meetings when you guys start full time for those, those seniors in the audience, definitely use their, the time that they're talking to kind of generate uh, what you're, you're going to say next or how to transition. And then conclude with an invitation to connect. So you can use LinkedIn, you could um, use a business card. We have little uh, electronic or digital cards that we now have with our uh, emails through Outlook that you guys um, can utilize as well. So all things considered, just uh, connect. The interviewing process. So again, you guys are, are probably in the thick of interviewing for, for the summer. Um, so really focus on your executive presence. Be well rested. I know you guys are in midterm season and, and we're in tax season. So I know well rested is probably hard to come by, but hopefully spring break was, was good to you guys and you guys got to catch up on a little sleep. But be prepared to talk about yourself. So um, who you are, maybe something that is important to you, what you're looking for, hobbies. Um, and then tell, tell us a, a time when, right? So you can talk about something that made you better um, or, or in a leadership role or um, something that made you a better communicator. Think about something that is unique to you. And then again, do some basic research on the company. A lot of times when they send you the confirmation details, they'll have a link to the website. You guys can check out kind of the latest and greatest of what's going on or the newsletters or interview tips that may be um, right at the forefront of the company website. Make sure that you come up with questions uh, for your employers as well. We will do a lot of the, the question asking, but we do also want to hear from you guys um, if there is anything else that we may have missed or that you are interested in getting to know about the firm. So at the interview tip, so be yourself, stay slow and steady. Remember the four P's, talk about yourself and remember your elevator speech. Again, this should come natural. I think that, that should be the key word for this. And then ask questions. So follow up. So similarly to the interview process, similar to client meetings, you will need to adapt um, to anything that kind of comes your way. So recover well. If you do enough video interviews, you will encounter it all. Jack came ring next door, um, lost internet connection, uh, a rogue cat that knocks over your laptop. You know, I, I think I've seen it all. Uh, it was someone's birthday and the balloon was stuck in their fan and it just kept going around and around, right? So let's try to avoid um, any of the, the mishaps that could happen. But, you know, these are life challenges. Everyone is uh, very understanding. We have staffing calls and there's babies crying and dogs barking and um, you just have to be flexible in this, in this remote environment. So you can handle whatever, <laughs> whatever comes your way. Just as Professor Robert Kelly held his composure, um, none of us are immune to operating in this new normal, right? So the guy, the guy at the front was the, uh, the professor. And then follow up again, same etiquette applies. So send an email shortly after your meeting. I would say within 24 hours is usually our guideline to let the interviewer know that you appreciate their time and to further express your interest. That's a great way to insert something that you talked about, um, maybe something that you guys had in common or something that you found interesting about the career path, um, really anything that kind of sets you aside from maybe other conversations that they've had. So keep the lines of communication open, make yourself available for follow-up questions and communication um, and ask good questions. So if you, if you didn't get anything answered, that's a perfect segue to kind of keep that open line of communication. So, you know, like I said, follow up within 24 hours, show good judgment on how often to follow up. Um, a lot of chances, unfortunately, you're not the only one that we are interviewing, although we would love that. 
Um, but typically we're going through hundreds and hundreds of resumes a week. So really give your recruiter some patience as well. Um, I would say follow up maybe every two weeks if you haven't heard um, in response to your interview, just so that you're staying kind of at the forefront. Then you'll get a quick status update from your interviewers. Uh, but yeah, again, give, give us some time to, to conduct all, all the interviews. All right, so multiple chances to stand out. So this kind of goes back to what we were talking about before, right? Just in a new setting. So you've already done the interviews, you've already had your client meetings, um, mention distinctive things that you talked about in the interview, personalize it and show interest. So show that you were attentive during those meetings. So now you've landed the job. You've put your best foot forward, you've brought your A game, and now you have to acclimate to this new work environment. I'm sure everybody here is very concerned about one, how you're gonna get training, and two, how you're gonna get orientation in a remote environment. Um, fortunately for my students, we have now been doing it for a year. Um, we are well equipped to put you through all the new hire training and onboarding training that you would go through. Um, you know, whether it's a new hire, whether it's an experienced hire, uh, you know, a lot of times we will actually send your new laptop and your monitors and whatever else you may get in terms of resources for your new job directly to your home. Uh, that way you can get set up with IT and go through orientation um, on your first day. So no, don't worry about that. Um, but it is a really good question to ask throughout the interview process, kind of what that looks like, right? Because every firm is going to be a little bit different. But um, you are going to have different softwares that each company uses to stay connected. So we use Microsoft Teams, Cisco WebEx, and Skype for Business, um, as well as Zoom and some other virtual platforms as well for our larger conferences. So, you know, there are ways that you guys can stay active and chatting with each other, even though you're not in this um, office setting. We do have pod groups, so that way you go back and uh, you know, you're kind of with the pod that you would be sitting around and you guys can stay interconnected uh, and grow together until we are all back in the office. So show them they made the right choice, right? You put your best foot forward, you brought your A game. Um, that needs to kind of continue through the first, you know, six months to a year of the job. A lot of places you'll get a buddy and a mentor that will be able to guide you through all your day-to-day -day questions, um, recommended trainings, things like that. So really show them that they have made the right choice. And then just a couple tips to remember, um, although you are on the internet, you are having face-to-face -face meetings, so similar rules do apply. Um, hair should be combed and to get full value from both parties in a discussion, you, you need to see the person's features, right? So don't be the silhouette, don't uh, be hiding. I think there was another clip actually that recently just came out with a lawyer who had the cat filter on. So make sure that if you are using these for engagement activities or um, social, you know, happy hours, things like that, that when you do have an interview or a client meeting that all uh, settings are set back to default because that, that was pretty funny actually. I think I saw that all over the news. So um, hats, not a good idea. They shade the face, make your features too dark. You know, pay attention to what's happening on the screen so it's not distracting. Um, you are on camera, right? So focus on the camera and eat or drink before or after. Try not to do it during unless you're, you know, grabbing a quick sip of water. And then I'm trying to think of what other, what other things I've kind of encountered throughout my year now being remote. But just remember at the end of the day, this is a virtual meeting. So you may encounter some not so ideal situations. Um, so just do your best to recover and recover well because this is not the end of our, our virtual environment. We are gonna be here for quite some time through 2021. So the, the sooner you can kind of get acclimated to these new environments, the better. So I do want to pause there. Any questions that you guys have on the presentation? Hopefully that was some useful information. So you guys can kind of refer back to, to that. Um, any any questions that kind of come right off the bat? How's my audience? Who are my seniors? How many seniors do I have? No seniors? Okay, a couple seniors. How about juniors? Juniors?
All right, sophomores. Sophomores. All right, and freshmen. Any freshmen? No freshmen. <laughs> That's all right. They've got plenty of time, right? Okay, very cool. All right. So is everyone pretty much going through the interview process right now? What are some challenges that you guys have faced? I'll share one thing that that's kind of a question too. Like sometimes you have like a conversational interview and you get to learn a lot about the other, the interviewer actually, but sometimes maybe you, you know, like you only have a certain amount of time. So like, how do you um, kind of um, not like interrupt the person, but you know, you want to shine on yourself a little more. How do you uh, approach that kind of situation? Yeah, that's a good question. So these are limited times, right? Like often you have a 30 minute set time that you have to speak to the, the employer. So what I would recommend doing is jotting down, you know, three to five bullets that you absolutely want the interviewer to know about you. Like you will not leave that interview without this person knowing that about you. And it gets hard because you start asking questions and you want to know about the firm and we're very chatty. <laughs> so I, I totally understand where that question comes from. Um, so I would say any chance or opportunity that you have to, especially when it comes down to the last three minutes and you really haven't gotten everything that you need to say, try to combine what you want the interviewer to know about you in re relation to one question. So they may not seem the same, but think about how you can really bridge those two things together. That way, the next opportunity that you have to speak, you can tie in, you know, those two last closing comments. Um, Oftentimes at the end though, they should, if they're a good <laughs> interviewer or recruiter, make sure that you know you have no other questions before they sign off. But um, if it does get chatty and they do have to run, just see how you can combine you know, two or three of those bullet points into one um, scenario or one um, example that you can provide them so that they really, you're not leaving that meeting without you know, those core things down that you wanna get across. Great, thank you. And also just want to remind everyone, feel free to use the Zoom uh, raise hand feature and we'll, we'll call on you. So for my juniors who are having interview or internships this summer and my seniors who are starting full-time this summer, what are you guys nervous about when starting a full-time or internship opportunity with the firm this summer? No one has any jobs lined up this summer? Not yet? Um, I, I guess I would just say, um, making sure you stay on top of the work and not letting it overlap with your home life since we are at home, like finding that balance might be kind of um, difficult at first to see mm -hmm. how to handle all of that. Yeah, absolutely, right? So one thing that we have that's super helpful and most firms use is Outlook. So if you guys are not familiar with Outlook, um, that's the mailing services. It does have a calendar. And so, you know, taking a look at kind of what you've got going on the day. If you know you have client meetings, um, maybe, you know, you can go to a separate room in your apartment or in your house uh, to ensure that there will be no distractions for that specific time or just, you know, letting your, your roommates know that, um, hey, from 12 to 1, I, I have a technical meeting today. Um, please keep it down. <laughs> I think everybody is is different, right? Between child care and pets and maybe you're a caregiver for a family member. So I think everyone has been really flexible in this remote work environment. So don't try to hide it. Be very upfront, you know, with your, your colleagues. Say, hey, look, I'm, I'm taking care of my mom um, today. You know, she needs support from um, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. So I may be on a little bit later that day or if you really need something and I'm not at my computer, just call me. Um, so that way you're always in constant communication with your engagement team and they can kind of know when to expect you and when not to expect you. But I would imagine most people are, are pretty flexible um, in this remote environment for sure. What other concerns do you guys have? Joel, I saw you come off mute a little earlier. Do you have a question? Oh, no, I don't have a question, but um, I guess if I were to answer your question about like any concerns, I just making sure like I make a good impression. I don't want to make like a bad impression on anyone. I think that'd be like my biggest fear is if I did that. 
Yeah. So I think, you know, it is, it's stressful, right? Because a lot of these um, first or second round interviews are recorded, right? You're not even talking to a live person. And then you kind of go into this live setting. So really just be confident and practice makes perfect. So if you guys need to record yourselves doing interviews um, in advance, I think that's a great way to get feedback from yourself. Maybe have a, a colleague um, watch it and see if, you know, they can recommend something that you may do differently to make you stand out, or maybe it's a nervous habit that you didn't know that you did. So it's always good to, you know, pre-record yourself, see how you can get better, uh, Google some questions, or even go through kind of a mock interview process. So I saw someone raise their hand, and I don't know who it was. Oh, it's me. Um, and I guess my question is, when you say you landed the internship or even the full-time offer, and maybe you're like a few weeks into it or who knows how long and you realize it's not exactly what you want. How do you go about uh, communicating that with, you know, with the team and trying to see if you can try something else out? Yeah, that's a good question, right? Because you guys have so many options and you're not getting to come into the office and really get a good feel for the culture and um, the setting and the type of work that you're going to be doing. So I would say, well, the first half, the first part of that, I would say, Definitely do your research on the front end. If you are committing to an internship or a job full time and you're really uncertain still about kind of the type of work that you're going to be doing, I would absolutely do coffee chats with some professionals. You can set those up with recruiters. Um, you could maybe find a, a professor or um, someone's parent that is in the field that you can really just ask them kind of what they do on a day to day. So I would say that would be the first and foremost thing before starting. <laughs> so as a student, even if you've already accepted, make sure you do your research. Um, once you've started and you realize it's, it may not be the best fit for you, talk to HR, talk to your recruiter. Um, I would give it time. I think onboarding in a virtual environment, it's really hard to feel connected to a firm until you've actually been there in person. So you got to give it time. If you're super unhappy with your um, engagement team or maybe somebody that you're on projects with or you're like, you know, I'm, I'm doing tax and I'm, I'm on a lot of corporate clients, but I really want to get in onto those uh, individual clients, you know, the ultra high net worth um, athletes or celebrities. Like I really, I think I, I chose wrong. Talk to um, your engagement team. I guarantee you rather than lose you, they would be more than willing to kind of rearrange the type of work that you're doing um, before having you leave altogether. So it may be more difficult, but at the end of the day, we don't want you to be miserable. So, so definitely, you know, reach out to HR or recruiting for assistance or even your buddy, because you're gonna be assigned someone who's in the same level as you as an intern and new associate who's been there about six months to a year. So any questions or concerns that you have, you can always go to them as well, because hopefully they've at least spent some time in the office. Although now, you know, our, our 2020 grads haven't been in the office either yet. So, um, you know, bounce ideas around people. What, what has made them stay? Um, what has their career path kind of looked like? Any advice that they would give to the new hires? So I would definitely say, you know, do some ne internal networking and, and ask for some guidance um, because, it can happen. It does happen. <laughs> what else? What other concerns? I did have a question as well. How often should you reach out to professionals that we've met along the way to maintain that network? I would say multiple times through the semester. Um, you know, we're reviewing hundreds and hundreds of resumes all the time. So, you know, if you want to stay present and you're really invested in the firm, um, I would say two to three times throughout the semester, for sure. Once you've landed the job, I would say once a semester is probably good. What other questions can I answer for you guys? So you said once a semester, once you've actually landed, I would, I guess I just would have assumed that it was the opposite. Like once you're actually supposed to be part of it, like that's when you're, when you want to establish more of a presence and be like, okay, I'm now part of this group. So could you elaborate on that a little bit? 
Like, yeah, so. sure. No problem. So once you've landed the job, so let's say you're a senior, um, it's fall and you just secured your job for after graduation. So I would say the following spring, um, you, you could probably reach out once during the, the following semester, at least for Anderson. Um, again, I'm just, I'm speaking on, on what I know. Um, as it gets closer to your start date, you'll be assigned onboarding tasks and um, training and first day logistics. So by default, you know, that probably month right before you start, you're gonna be communicating a ton, probably, you know, weekly, maybe, no, maybe not daily, but definitely weekly um, as it leads up to your start date. But throughout the semesters, I would say, you know, once, twice is, is fine. Because um, a lot of the heavy recruiting that we do do is interns and associates in the fall and then uh, sophomores or um, grad students who are graduating two years from then in the spring. So the way that it's kind of laid out, I mean, you could talk to you could talk to the professionals that you interviewed with if you want to just kind of start building a relationship with them. But I wouldn't say anything is really necessary until as it gets closer to your start date. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I know a question that I get a lot is any resources that they can use um, or get in advance to get ahead for their start date. But a lot of the times you're going to go through all the technical skills and, and development that you'll need on your first day and through trainings from there. So some firms may have resources that they can provide you early. Um, I know specifically for our evaluation practice, they will have material that you can kind of take a look at in advance. But um, really, you know, we, we expect you guys to come in knowing nothing. So we'll teach you from the ground up on the technical side, everything that you would need to know. What else? Um, when you brought up that the evaluation um, service line would probably give you information to kind of look at before coming in, is that something like public or is that internal like Anderson um, information? Yeah, so a lot of times it's just the resources that they use. Um, I know it's a lot of like peer reviewed information. Um, it, it's public. But I think what we give you is more specific to the type of work that you would be doing specifically for our evaluation team here at Anderson. So um, all the documents should be public, though. They're usually peer reviewed articles um, or research articles, things of that nature. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get a whole bunch of Anderson resources when you start on your first day. <laughs> what other questions? I have a question um, sure. more, related, more related to um, keeping relationships and networking. So, um, so right now, like I'm interviewing with multiple firms, um, but let's say like I, I landed an internship with one of them, um, but there's still other firms that I really liked or I'm more, I'm also in, still interested in. Do you think it's, or is it professional to like still keep relationships with um, professionals from the other firms and not just the firm that you landed with. Does that make sense? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, so so accounting is a small world, right? So even if you decide to go somewhere right now and you locked into an internship or a full-time job, who knows where you're going to be down the road, right? So I would say you can definitely keep a relationship with other recruiters. I wouldn't be actively interviewing with them if you're if you've already landed another job and you're for sure going to start with that other job just to not waste anybody's time. But as far as maintaining a relationship, just checking in, seeing how they're doing, um, giving them a quick update on where you're at, I would definitely encourage that. As long as you're not actively recruiting at, at two places at once, if you've already secured a job, I think that would be okay. <laughs> just keep in mind, it is a small world. <laughs> We've had interns that have accepted full-time jobs and then we hear that they're interviewing with other firms and you know, it's not a deal breaker, but it's not ideal for us. <laughs> Would interning um, sorry, um, would interning in different semesters be an issue? No, not not unless I mean most of the time like we have people that interview in the spring and then they'll interview in the summer um, or you know vice versa. So no, I think you can definitely have different internships in different parts of the year as long as 
um, you know, you're open with the recruiter. Um, they kind of know what you're doing. And I, like I know for us, for example, we have um, interns that were with us last summer who we extended offers to um, for full time after graduation, but we didn't have any availability for the during the school year for them to come intern. So they would intern somewhere else. But as long as the other firm is understanding and aware that you know you do have something lined up for after the internship or um, so forth, and it's not any you know conflict of interest, then I mean I I encourage you know to the extent that you can to do that. <laughs> For sure. Thank you. Good questions. All right. Any other questions? Otherwise, I know um, Gabrielle and Justin have a couple more announcements for you guys, but I'm happy to hang on for a couple more minutes. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate your time today. I'm going to put my email in the chat if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns uh, from today's presentation. I am happy to follow up with you. Thank you, Katie. And we're going to take a little group picture. So definitely uh, hang on. And uh, everyone, if you can, if you feel comfortable, turn on your cameras. And I'm going to take a few uh, pictures of us. So uh, turn on your cameras if you want. And yeah, so let's see. All right, so I'm going to take the first picture. Three, two, one, cheese. All right, and I'll take the second one. Three, two, one, cheese. Awesome. All right, um, everyone. Yes, thank you again, Caitlin, for a wonderful presentation. And just to run through the announcements one more time before we say goodbye, um, I want to welcome everyone back again. And I hope you all feel recharged and ready for what's next in the semester. Um, please join us this Wednesday. We'll have Baker Tilly presenting on Building Confidence. Um, this Friday, the 26th, from 5 to 6, we'll have a cooking session. So bring your appetite because we're making a fettuccine Alfredo via Zoom. <laughs> And if you're interested in any of our previous meetings, you can find them on our YouTube page at AACSUN. So thank you again, Caitlin, for a wonderful presentation. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go send the uh, screenshots into the chat. Great job today. Thanks, Justin. Have a great rest of your week. You too. Bye.